You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to a very important episode on Ask Drone You. Today, we're going to be talking about filming on set, actually working in the big leagues. How can you set yourself up to get those jobs, what you need to know, how to network, and who to network with. We're also going to talk about unions. Do you need to be in a union to film on set? I'm just going to have to answer that right now. The answer is no, but I'm going to tell you a very important story about how people are trying to change the perception of whether you need to be in a union or not. But anyway, guys, my name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode 596. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for all your questions. And if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Get it in. We love to hear from you guys and uh, do our best to get to all of them as soon as we can. Definitely, guys. We're really excited to talk about this today. So let's just leap right in to the question, which is going to be brought to you by the brand new Drone U website. For one low price, you can have all the content. You can elevate your experience, gain confidence, learn the basics to fly, the don't crash course, flying over water, subject tracking, thermal, building FPV racers, flying FPV, whatever you wanna learn, it's all there for one low monthly fee. Think of it like Amazon Prime. Check it out, thedroneu.com. Play that question, homeboy. Hey guys, this is Chris from Atlanta. I'd like to approach some of the production companies here. There's a lot of stuff being filmed. My first question is, would an Inspire 1 be adequate enough? I've seen GoPro footage in movies, so I know it should work. Second question is, should I join a union? Third question is, do you have any advice? Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. I like that nice, succinct question that Chris asked, the way he posed it. Good questions, and uh, some you know a little bit about, Paul. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of working on sets in California, New Mexico, the Bahamas, some nice places. Um, And I'll be honest with you, Rob, I used to think working on set was one of the coolest things ever. It was like the epitome of being a drone pilot, like you could get there. Um, But I don't believe that anymore. Um, It's one of the most wrought full of regulations Um, It's Hmm. it it is uh, saturated full of um, ignorant leaders. Ouch. Yeah. Um, But that's not talking about directors or producers or anything like that. Those people are actually really cool. Um, And know their craft really well in most cases. Very well. And Mm -hmm. they are there for a business purpose to get the best thing that they can. And most of those people are extremely professional. But there is an attitude or a trend on the lower end of film sets, which is very dramatic, very rumor-based, very high school-esque. And if you are going to succeed in working on set, you cannot partake in any of that. You cannot distract people when you're on set. You can't take pictures with crew. You can't post pictures with crew and whatnot. Um, In fact, there's a lot of rules that you should be aware of. So how do you set yourself up to get those jobs? Let's let's say whatever I said doesn't (laughs) doesn't mean anything to you. You don't care. You told them don't do it. No, I think everyone wants to have their own experience. And honestly, there is still an element of that type of shows that I absolutely love to work for. And there actually are still some opportunities that you have to work on sets. I was asked by three movies last week since I cleared up my name with the local film office. There you go. I have been getting call after call after call, and I've been declining call after call after call. One one point that I want to make about those jobs, because it's something that you talked about that is it's always stuck out with me. There's a lot of hurry up and wait, right? You're oh, you're yeah. on set all day long. Mm-hmm. It's not like you can do a job where you're doing an inspection. You go do the inspection on your time and then you leave. Yeah. You could be there 10, 12 hours and be used 30 minutes. Yep. I mean, realistically, that's a possibility. Yep. And you have to be okay with that. Right. And you also have to charge to be there all day. Sure. And we'll talk about pricing here in a second. But um, so how do you set yourself up to get in these jobs? The best way is to set yourself up as a vendor with the local film office. So whether that's the state film office, whether that's the local city, uh, you know, office, set yourself up as a vendor. Make sure that you're in the right category. Make sure that you're set up in the right way. And then also make sure two months later, 
that all your information is correct because someone actually went in and changed my information purposefully, and I have the evidence to prove it. It's a cutthroat industry. Oh, yeah. All the people way down to the local do, level. People will do anything yeah. to put themselves ahead of you. So you really have to be aware of that. If you've ever seen the television show Unreal, which makes fun of how they make the television show The Bachelor, it is really like that. It is absolutely really like that. That would be way more fun than the actual show, The Bachelor. Yeah. Right? Oh, it sure is, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch that one. Uh, but anyway, so you want to get yourself set up as a vendor with these people. You want to make sure that the, the information is validated. But you may also have to educate said film person because two things happened to me two months ago, and I've said this story before, but I went into local film office and she was like, part 107 is not law, meh. And it's just like, well, I'm sorry that you can't read black and white online. Why don't we head down to local FAA office so I can have the feds correct you, because this is ridiculous. Then she tried telling me I had to be a union pilot, which isn't true. Um, drone operators are neither a grip man or a cameraman. They cannot be categorized into such. And the unions really just want to capture that group of pilots to, you know, bolster their membership, sure. which, which I totally, I understand. But there is no law anywhere that says that you have to be in a union to work on set. In fact, uh, as a drone pilot, you are, quote unquote, a vendor. Hmm. And what that means is very simple. If you are a vendor, it means you operate as a separate subcontractor, as an entity. Now, you do have to have very high limits of liability if you're working for one of the big dogs like Sony or HBO. You need anywhere from 3 to $5 million in insurance. If you're working for the little guys, up to $1 or $2 million will be fine as well. But that being said... Go into these meetings, network with these people, but be nice. And if you feel like they're not educated on drone law, educate them. Absolutely. Because there's a couple, there, I mean, when this city director of film was trying to tell me I needed to be in a union and she was trying to tell me that I didn't know the law, what was more glorious was when the FAA said to her and her colleague was, ma'am, there is only one institution, one government institution that owns the airspace and regulates the airspace. That is the FAA. That is not you. That is not you, honey. <laughs> and I just wanted to sit there and be like, <laughs> you, mean, <sighs> you mean you didn't do that? No, I really wanted wow, to. Wow, you really held it together. Yeah. So as far as getting on the list of vendors, is that pretty simple? I mean, can anybody do it or is there a vetting process as far as you know? Does it depend There's on really the not. area? There's really not. Um, and in fact, one other thing that people should be careful of too is that you may get a call from production companies. In fact, one of the big problems with the film incentives here in New Mexico is that the regulation is so vague, nepotism can run rampant and never be cross-checked. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, in New Mexico, producers are supposed to call multiple vendors for the same job. Oftentimes they don't, and even when they do, you can tell if they're trying to scout you or if they're trying to just move on from you very mm -hmm. quickly. Do they ask you for your pricing? Mm. Do they ask you for your availability? Right. Do they ask you how they're going to follow up or when? Those are the key questions, because a lot of times... They just meet their quota to contact five different vendors and, and be cool with it. But. Yeah, because oftentimes <laughs> it's a it's like anything. It's a very yeah. relationship based business. So particularly people that are doing a lot of work in a given area, they mm -hmm. probably have connections with people they like to use. Totally. And they, they like to use them because they've gotten comfortable with them. They know they good work. That's why you would get called back, right? Mm -hmm. Because they know you're going to be professional. You're going to show up when you say you will. Yep. You're going to deliver what you say you're going to deliver. And that truly has been the defining factor because my competition in town, he never talks about flying skill. All he talks about, and, and I'm suing him now <laughs> for <you>. libel, yeah, <laughs> is, uh, oh, he's not a good pilot. Oh, he's being investigated. And, um, um, oh, yeah, he's not union. Number one, you don't have to be union. Number two... Let's have a fly off and let your flying speak for itself. Oh, wait, it already does. It's <laughs> horrible. Um, you know, guys, uh, Rob has a point. If you focus on your quality and you focus on being a good person, people will ruin themselves on their own. This film director made a reputation for herself within minutes. Mm -hmm. In minutes. And then I mentioned the guy who brought this up because it's, it's public record. I was investigated because one person decided that I was their competition and tried to use it against me to better his business. So I'm not under investigation. I've been cleared of all things. I was the very first person in the state of New Mexico <laughs> to even have what a, a license. What an honor. 
You know well, what? Oh no! When the we're FAA when the Paul. FAA said that to them too, it was like, oh, yeah, your boy that's been lying to you, homeboys, is wrong and doesn't even have a license. I have a license. It was like, oh, I just. I get so yeah. fired up talking about it now because this lady had to be educated on what is black and white and her job is to be educated on the law for filming. And it's like, how do you have a job? Uh, yeah, I know. And, and nothing has changed. And no. that's just the way that the world works, right? Yes. So you have to learn to navigate that. And you have to learn sometimes it. it's not worth fighting. You right. have to outsmart these people. Exactly. So, and honestly, it's not freaking difficult. <laughs> so... <laughs> So follow up question. Um, he actually asked the question about getting in touch with production companies. We focused on the local film office and that kind of thing, which is very helpful and beneficial. But does it make sense to actual to call actual production companies directly? And uh, yes. how would you go about that? <clears throat> I would meet with the line producer or I would meet okay. with the executive producer. The line producer is always in charge of the budget. They're trying to get things done for the producer in a certain price point. That person will normally tell you the price point and say, hey, if you can be X, we'll hire you. So you look them up in the phone book. I'm being a little bit facetious. You've no. got to find their number somehow. They the, probably have a secretary or somebody that handles their calls. And you're, what are you saying to them when you call? What am I saying? Uh, like to the, the screener of the production company and you finally have a number to call the production company, what are you going to say to them? Oh, hello there, Rob. My <laughs> name is Paul Aiken, and I'm a drone pilot here at Drone U. I'm a federally certified drone pilot with multiple waivers to fly at night and other things. And I was calling because I heard your production was in town, and I wanted to make sure you had my contact information in case you guys were looking for a drone pilot. Is that something you're looking for? Yeah, definitely. We're going to need that. Perfect. Um, where? Okay, so who is the best person to send my like demo reel? Because I want to make sure that they see that. Uh, that's probably going to be Sally. Perfect. Um, should I email that to you or Sally? Actually, you know, what's Sally's email address? Because distraction uh, always works. Cool. Understand that, people. Psychology is king and distraction is queen. That's all I have to say. Wow. Mic drop. <laughs> Anyways, I, so some some people are aware, some people aren't. We're launching a new business um, membership for people who are like really, really serious about starting their businesses. And those Freedom Journal groups I'm doing, or I did, we're going to be doing in those. But in one of the last Freedom Journal groups, we actually did a cold call like right on the spot, and it worked flawlessly. Yeah, and he actually got the gig. So or got yeah, them to listen. Well, okay, got so them to yeah, listen. That's the funny thing, Don Chalmers. Um, I went and shot the footage for them, but their media agency wasn't very happy and sent a pilot out and who didn't have a night waiver and got night footage, and it was horrible. Did I report him? Maybe. <laughs> Gosh. I'm kidding. I'm not like the other guy in town. So uh, anyway, I actually, I don't want to cause other people grief because I sit here and think to myself, would I want that on me? Because in the long term... What you put out, you're going to get back. That's true. Yeah, that's so. a, and, and again, if it's if it's an unsafe situation, yeah. then it, it's worthy of probably reporting somebody. Yes. Oh, I agree. But in people were say, well, why are you giving this lady such a hard time for the film festival? Because I was given a hard time. My reputation was destroyed. Um, other drone pilots took advantage of her ignorance and gave her false information, and it really ruined my reputation. Now I'm suing that pilot and his company, and uh, I may even be going after this lady. But she made it right, so I don't think it's. I didn't think it's worth it to take it any further. So, yeah, I mean, so what are the lessons in that story for our listeners? So one is, I think, understand that to a certain extent, that is the industry. Um, there's some yes. backbiting. There's some backstabbing. Backstab it's a very, very competitive. There is, it's not. There is some. It's everywhere. It's all right. over. It's a very tough industry to get into. And it's all about who you know. And if they don't respect you from the get-go, the chances of you being treated with respect are very low. Like, it is... It is of drone filming, this is by far, I mean, this is why Mike Fortin talks about why he has trust issues. Like, it is just so prevalent in that industry. It's unbelievable, you know? Right. I mean, like... And I think we all know that. That's, yeah. That's not news to anybody. It's the nature of the beast. And that's why I say, like, you know, when Ilker and I were out on the ranch filming last week and, you know, we we're both sitting there just chilling, enjoying it. And he's like, God, it's just so beautiful out here. Like, you don't have anyone asking you questions. You don't have people running around like they're like a chicken with their head cut off. It's just you and the land. 
and there happen to be antelope and cows and raccoons and all this other stuff. <laughs> but dealing with them <laughs> is a lot easier than dealing with local city government officials. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Which is sad because there are a lot of government officials that are actually really cool people. There so. are, and there are a lot of production company people that are really, really great people. And but mm-hmm. you just you do have to know that it, it's a tough industry, um, but it's doable. Obviously, I mean, people are flying for these production companies. Yeah, you just have to decide if if that's what's for you. And Chris, it sounds like it is. And so hopefully, this has been helpful. Um, for helping you get out there and make it happen. Yeah, totally. So anyway, sorry about my rant. Um, I'm very passionate about this, guys. Like I have, people have gone after me with everything they have and lost terribly. And I hope no one has to go through that. I hope that everyone thinks about what they do to other people in a mindset of what would it feel like if it was to be done to them. That's all I have to say. Absolutely. So So, thank you, Chris, for the question. If you have a follow-up, don't hesitate and get it in. We'd love to hear from you. And guys, again, if you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you, guys. That's going to do it.